That is the first time we've ever done an annual report to try to capture a good bit of what we do. 20 minutes representing basically 24-7, 365 days a year. Anyone surprised in this group? Want, anybody want to grab a microphone and so comment gotta, on? Yeah, so I was struck at uh, just how many people have been touched by WPAA. I mean, the, certainly the, the talent, the people who do the productions, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera, but obviously the audience, right, whether it's on cable TV, on the Internet, it just struck me how many people the WPAA has touched. I don't know what, how, to, how to total that up, but I'm sure it's a pretty large People number. ask us all the time, who watches? Do, do you make a difference? Did, it, did what you see tonight, folks, that are not willing to talk, do you feel like what you saw could have possibly made a difference in anybody's life? Is there any sound going to come out of anyone in this room? It's Everyone's light looking light, for they? Fluffy right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I did hear some giggles. I did. did. Was anybody getting scared with that very first story? No? Yes. The ghost story? No. Because you've heard it before? Yeah. The story about the baby is like, sit down. It's as like, it really intrigued me. It's like a book I want to read, just not a book because I don't like reading. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you wanted to know more about that story, so it was yes. edited in a way that said. <gasps> yeah, that's the kind of book I would want to read. I was really happy to see all the young people involved in production and getting a little experience with the green screen, even if they were just goofing around, because that's great exposure, and you never know where that can lead. Anyone want to take that microphone from Georgia? I really like that there were sensitive topics, hot topics that were approached and dealt with, whether it was the Muslim community coming together with other residents and learning to understand and, you know, cohabitate. And uh, I think addressing uh, people moving into Wallingford, perhaps they did have some apprehension. It seemed like once they're here that it definitely was beyond their expectations and that they're happy to be here and they're remaining here. So I think a lot of the uh, topics that people might sort of skirt around are addressed and that the episodes continue so there is an audience for it and that people really are interested in hearing one another and getting those opinions out and dealt with, I think um, is really helpful with uh, just cohabitating in our community. I'd like to sort of... Um Second that, that was sort of the feeling that I got as well in watching the videos, and I was also very proud of our town. This is a town that I grew up in, and to see how it's changed and to see the, um, the open dialogue and the diversity of people um, is really, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm really grateful, and I'm really grateful that we have this, um, this vehicle to bring those people together and to have those conversations. So thank you. Thank you, Dana. My turn. <laughs> As part of the uh, Sparrow Falling project, I continue to be. Uh, I was informed this evening there'll be some more scenes that will be edited and so forth. And what I found, because it is a small town here in Wallingford, you can learn a lot about production, about how things are filmed and so forth. And I was extremely involved in just watching it all while I was actually doing it too. I thought that was fascinating for me especially, you know, because you can learn about production and editing and so forth in a small town, you know, and if you want to go further with that, you've got something to start with. Please. So for years, for years, I would read the annual report right, from, from WPA. Read it. I actually, well, I was on the board for like a decade or so. So I would read the annual report and, you know, it reads as a I don't know, legal document, I suppose, as a requirement, uh, it's an annual report. Uh, no matter what you do, include some pictures, some, some maybe some quotes, some block quotes, it, it, it doesn't make it very exciting. Really want to thank you and congratulate you. This was inspiring. I think the annual report as a, as a video really tells the story. It shows how important WPAA is to the community in a way that um, only video can. So congratulations. Thank you. That's really great, thank you. <laughs>
say I'm new to Wallingford and just seeing the video clip just showed me how vast Wallingford is and how much entertainment is available and I got to know a little bit about the community just by looking at the annual report. I'm just so impressed. It's wonderful. Thank you. Welcome to Wallingford. Let's welcome her to Wallingford, folks. I noticed how like all of it was very enjoyable. Half of it was kind of like a variety of ages and it was very like funny <laughs> and then the other half half <laughs> was like um serious topics that were like good to listen to thank you i'm gonna say i totally agree with you because there's such a wide variety that this can be a channel of choice uh because the topics are so diverse some are fun some are serious um it's it's like regular standard TV. And the other thing is there is so much talent in Wallingford. And this mashup definitely demonstrates that. And just the show making it that I'm lucky enough to host. The artisans that have been coming on, I literally leave the studio every time and say, wow, I had no idea that we have so much talent right here in Wallingford. And within our state, I'm sure. So it's an exciting time when we have a new guest to really find out that some of them were schooled right here in Wallingford Public Schools that have gone on to perfect their craft. Some have taken that passion and grown it into a successful business, which is the format for the artisan stories, and that's what making it is. But wow, just it really does have that wow factor. And um, it's really great to be a part of that and help push that out so that everyone else is like seeing that. And the artists are getting the exposure that they rightly deserve. Thank you for those comments about your participation. It's great to get new people involved. We hope that this talk back will be included with the actual 20 minutes that you just saw in some fashion to allow people to get the same feelings um, that you're expressing here. I just wanted to say that it is wonderful to be here, a part of Wallingford, and I love all the energy that we have in our town. And I'd like to see more business owner participation to come down and support this wonderful gem of a station. We have to keep this wonderful legacy continuing. So I'd just like to see more support. On that note, I do have a comment. We may be defunded. It's not clear what's going to happen. It's happening at the federal level. The FCC has a docket before it, uh, which is looking at considering the value of the channel and applying that value that has never been monetized in any way against the funds that we receive. And we operate at a budget of around $80,000 a year. We have our building space that is a primary expense. We have volunteers that operate the station a good deal of the time but it's not 100% volunteer, but our staffing is very minimal, bare bones, to keep the place going. But if they value a channel at $100,000 and our budget is only 80, they might be asking us to pay $20,000 a year for that channel. We don't know what is going to happen. The outcome right now is with the FCC. Um, we believe and we're thankful that Mary Mashinsky is here tonight. She did ask if there's anything that we need. And right now, we in Connecticut can be grateful that we have a firewall because in Connecticut, we have a statewide franchise system. And the state has legislation that establishes public access as a function in every community. That's not the same in Massachusetts. So we believe we have that firewall of safety that says, yes, we'll be able to com continue in some fashion. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen this year. So we do want to, to keep people abreast of what's happening with us, just in case um, it's somewhat devastating. We don't know. The other news that we have is that we wrote a check to finalize buying the building. But we haven't finalized the debt for the building. So as of the last day of December of 2018, we officially 100% own this building, but we're still in debt. We did have a refinancing opportunity that saved us around $7,000, and we will be asking the community to maybe give us $25 in May when there is a Give Greater um, fundraising opportunity that's for all nonprofits 
in the greater New Haven area. So we're going to ask, and we hope about a thousand people will give us, you know, we hope that the community will step up, and we hope they're not stepping up because we're literally you know, not going to be funded at all. We need the funds no matter what, but if we own the building and have no debt, we are guaranteed to be able to still stay here in your community and do what is what has been done uh, as we have shown you here today and we've done it together we don't know what our future is like but we are committed our the board is committed to staying and with the ability to pay off this building in in may of this year in terms of the debt in addition to owning it 100 percent um, we are one of the few public access stations in the nation that is in that good shape so congratulations to all of you in the community that's brought us this far those blue collar guys um, that have made this building that was once a cow barn what it is today. They need a, a round of applause and one of the main guys is in this room. So let's rock it for her. Okay. We also have some news about our gallery, but I'm going to share that later. So thank you all for coming out tonight because it is what we do together. Thank you for sharing your thoughts about our video report. And uh, hopefully there'll be many more to come. That's the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce.